What we're going to talk about today is a deep dive of the CMS changes to the critical access hospitals conditions of participation. They did make several changes a couple years ago. They've updated them and they continue to do so. And the reason we want to provide this information for you is so that when CMS does come around and do a survey, that you don't end up with one of these, which is the statement of deficiencies and your plan of correction that's going to be in place. In 19, I'm sorry, in 2018, CMS rewrote all of the conditions of participation for critical access hospitals. And that's one of the reasons we wanted to present this information so that everyone is current and up to date. They made four major changes at that time. And by rewriting them, they also changed where they put not only the regulations, but also the interpretive guidelines and the survey procedures. Uh, the swing beds tend to slap over into long-term care facility type services. And so what CMS did was they put the regulations into Appendix W, which is for critical access hospitals, but then they put the interpretive guidelines and the survey procedures in Appendix PP, which happens to be for long-term care. And so it is quite confusing. There were multiple, multiple pages, like almost 300 pages of changes. And even though we have reached out to them and explained how much this can cause confusion, unfortunately, that's the way it was. And also that the swing bed regulations did originally come from the long-term care manual. They did rewrite all the tag numbers this year, and so now there are 12 tag numbers for the critical access hospital. Here's an example of the differences. They do provide this information for you. And the easiest way to find this is when you go into the regulation, that you can go above the regulation from the transmittal, and it will show the differences in what was tag number 350 is now tag number 1600. Um, even though the swing beds could apply to an acute care hospital, all the information I'm going to provide today is from the critical access hospital. For swing beds alone and critical access, the United States has almost 1,400 critical access hospitals, and that's hospitals with 25 beds or less. And they have their special designation through CMS for Medicare and Medicaid purposes. 88% of those do provide swing bed, and that's a swing bed is literally just an opportunity for a patient to continue to receive care in a community closer to their own home. Sometimes after they've been admitted to the smaller hospitals, they would have to go to a larger one anywhere from one to four hours away to receive continuing care before they could go home or could go back to their uh, nursing home from which they might have come. I'll also tell you that the swing beds do provide a great financial support to critical access hospitals. It helps maintain at least that one inpatient or at least one patient census that they have to maintain to keep their certification. And the other reason it's a huge help for these hospitals is that Medicare swing beds, they're paid at a higher rate. And so it's a higher Medicare acute care rather than a nursing home care rate. And so that's why for many of the hospitals, uh, it is a huge revenue, revenue source for them. The difference is that when they do enter the swing beds, critical access hospital doesn't have to decrete the, um, complete the MDS, which is the minimum data sheet, which long-term care facilities are required to complete. Before we get into a lot of the deep dive information, a lot of people always ask, how do we keep up with these changes? Because it seems nowadays, especially with COVID, changes are coming from CMS daily. There was one even just last week alone on long-term care. And so the best way to do it is to designate one or maybe two people, if you're fortunate, to have enough staff to do that, that can go out and check the website, if not a couple times a week, at least weekly. And what you can do is you go in and you sign up for the Federal Register. I'm going to show you some sites here on how to do that. And then once a month at least, or at least until COVID's over, um, go out and to see if there's been any changes to the manual. And then also at the same time, see if they've issued a survey memo in response to those changes. 
Again, I mentioned before, they have a website you can ask questions, which is great. It does provide a wonderful resource if CMS asks, why did you ever do this? Here's how you sign up to get the Federal Register. They will send you subscription and notices as frequently as you want them. I get them daily during the week. It's wonderful because sometimes things come through at the last minute and I can keep up to date with them. This is an example of what you will see when you're looking at, gee, which area do I want to go to? What applies to me? And the COPs are in the State Operations Manual. You may hear it referred to as SOM. Um, and so hospitals are A, and critical access hospitals are W. So again, just as a reminder, we're going to look at Appendix PP for long-term care, because that's where the interpretive guidelines are for swing beds and W is critical access, that's where the actual regulation sits. And the best way, if you ever do need to ask a question, is go to this site. Um, Anita Moore is over critical access. She is wonderful. She is very responsive. She will give you an answer in very easy to work with language. And many hospitals do cite this. Uh, some of my risk managers I've worked with actually pull it off put it into their file so that when CMS comes around and they ask, why did you do that, they can hand this to them. The current manual is dated as of February 22nd of this year. Red line changes, which is where they show what was old and what was new, were put in in October of 2018. And now the manual also has updates from November of 2019. As I mentioned before, they rewrote the swing bed um, regulations back in 2018. Uh, they did do some updates. You will see the date here that shows it from 2018. And then this is the state operations manual for the critical access hospital. Again, I've tried to put these e links in so it can be very quick and easy. What you see here in red down below, that's what was updated, and that's what has been new. This is the appendix for the long-term care. Everything's in red because they did do a whole bunch of revisions, and that was new as of 2017. And then here is the transmittal that you'll probably see once you do go in. And I'm going to show you how to double click on here in a minute to find it. Before we move on, here's the tag crosswalk, because it's very confusing to try to figure out when you're looking in, whether it's Appendix PP or Appendix W, what is the tag number I'm supposed to be looking at? So at least CMS did do this for us. And you can find out what is the crosswalk number, what is the tag number. 485 is the one for critical access hospital. And you will find the old tag number over here. And this is the new tag number. The tag numbers that we're going to be talking about will be your 1600s. That is the tag numbers for the critical access hospital. Um, you will see a few on there on payment. I will be very frank with you, we do not address payment during, our, during my webinar. So the best way to keep up um, in finding out if there's been any recent changes, this is the certification site. Again, the website is up above at the top here. And what you'll do is you'll go over to the posting date, and you'll double click. You may have to hit it three times, because there's been so many changes. And that will take you to the most current date. That's what you want to look at. When you look at this, you will see a vast number that are applicable to COVID. For example, here is everything on COVID. Um, though there were a lot of changes, they do have some from ASCs. But uh, the last nine that were related to absolute COVID, there was one that came out last week that did apply to long-term care facilities, and it had to do with testing and screening of patients and of staff. One thing you definitely don't want to see is the Appendix Q on immediate jeopardy. This was the um, guidance that they had put out on it. Immediate jeopardy is when there is imminent harm um, to a person or a patient based upon whatever standard or condition of participation that hasn't been met. So I want to get into the four swing bed changes very briefly uh, that CMS put into effect back in November. And essentially, really, regulations are effective 60 days after they publish them in the Federal Register. And there were only two exceptions in this situation. Again, normally it's um, 60 days. However, they understood we were going through COVID, and they gave critical access hospitals an extension of time. QAPI is your quality assurance performance improvement. 
that was 18 months. And the antibiotic stu uh, stewardship program was six months. So they did give an extension of time for them. There were four changes, and these affect critical access hospitals with swing beds, also with small hospitals and rural hospitals. And just so I can clarify it, critical access hospital, again, is those 25 beds or less. You have to have at least 25 beds. Small hospital are those who can have 200 beds. And a rural hospital is those that have 100 beds. So there is a slight distinction. The other distinction is a critical access hospital cannot be any closer than 35 miles to the next acute care hospital. So if I'm living in North Platte, Nebraska, and I have a critical access hospital, the next hospital at an acute level cannot be any closer than 35 miles. So Omaha would be fine. There can be rural hospitals around me within that 35 miles and small hospitals, but I cannot have any hospital that's larger than that within that time, within that radius.